Hi everybody, Jennifer Schaus here. We're coming to you live today from Washington, DC, and thanks for joining us in our Webinar Wednesday series. Uh, this year in calendar 2023, we are covering the top 40 government contractors, and today we will focus on Maximus. Uh, all of our webinars are complimentary and they are recorded. You can find all of our recordings on our YouTube channel, which is complimentary. If you're looking for the PowerPoints, those are all on slideshare.net. You can link, you can log into slideshare.net with your LinkedIn credentials. Uh, and again, that is also a complimentary um, platform. If you're looking for any of other any other of our webinars, you can find them on our YouTube channel. We've got over 600 there, so um, plenty of resources. Uh, a quick blurb about us. We are based in downtown DC um, and work with revenue generating government contractors. Some of our services are listed here, including uh, focus on GSA schedule and contract vehicles. Uh, we also provide um, other services that you see there on your screen. You can hop over to our website to learn more about our services. <laughs> In the event that you are selling to federal contractors, uh, we do have a newsletter that goes out every Monday and reaches now over uh, 26, almost 27,000 subscribers, most of which who are government contractors. Um, we've got advertising options uh, in the newsletter, as well as here in our webinars, and then also on LinkedIn, we can uh, post any of your events or uh, services or any webinars that you're hosting there. If you want more information about that, just contact us at the hello at jennifershouse.com uh, email address. Uh, a couple things to bring to your attention. Uh, tomorrow, which is August 24th at uh, noon uh, Eastern time, we are covering the part uh, second half of um, the GSA Schedule Basics. This is with our friends over at the VA, so that's their small business office. Uh, that will be recorded. It'll be posted on the VA website. We've also, uh, we are also posting them on our website as well. Uh, and then Tuesday of next week, I believe that is, at 11 o'clock Eastern with our friends at the VA, we are covering some contracting opportunities within the VA. Um, this is a SBA webinar focused on the VA. Uh, the links for these are on our website. You can find them actually under the tab called Events even though it's the webinar. Uh, and continuing here with webinars, uh, August 31st, uh, which will be that um, following Thursday of next week uh, with our friends at Visible Thread, we're covering the GSA schedule. Uh, these are all complimentary. The link is there on your screen and it's also on our website. Um, the GSA schedule uh, with the Virginia PTAC, which are, is now called the APEX Accelerator. That'll be Thursday, September 14th. Another GSA webinar with uh, GovSpend and FedMine will be October 19th. And then October 26th is, um, since we'll be into the new fiscal year, we'll be uh, talking about how to capitalize on uh, FY24 federal contracts. And even further out of uh, next year, uh, but less than a year away, February 15th, uh, we're covering a marketing class. Again, all these are on our website under the event section. These are all complimentary uh, free webinars. All you need is an email address to, um, to sign up. Uh, anyone that's um, kind of here in crunch time on the GSA Oasis Plus, um, Consultation. We do offer proposal support packages, send us an email, and we will um, contact you with our team member who's um, helping clients with that. Okay, now uh, the reason our webinars are free is because they're paid for and covered through our uh, generous sponsors. So we want to thank our friends at GovEvents for the premier platform for posting events related to government and government contracting. You can find all of our webinars and events on GovEvents.com, as well as recordings from our past 600 webinars. We want to thank Tom Johnson and his team at Set Aside Alert. They're the go-to publication for contracting opportunities for small, women-owned, veteran-owned, hub zone, and AD firms. Visit SetAsideAlert.com for more information. The Fairfax, Fairfax Economic Development Authority has an online calendar of events and webinars. We want to thank them for posting our events and webinars on their calendar. Okay, the Virginia PTAC, again, I mentioned that uh, they are going through, all the PTACs are going through a name change to Apex Accelerators, as you can see here on your screen, uh, but they offer free, uh, the Virginia PTAC at George Mason University out in Fairfax, they offer free one-on-one -on -one counseling to established government contracting firms in Virginia on federal, state, and local procurement topics. 
If you're interested in learning more, please use the links provided to explore services, review homework recommendations, register for live training, and find useful links to agencies and other self-directed learning. Online resources and group trainings are free with no restriction on business location. One-on-one -on -one counseling is, however, limited to eligible client companies. The Greater Reston Chamber of Commerce has a monthly government con council meeting to network with peers, learn about upcoming events and opportunities, and help shape future programming. The meetings take place the fourth Tuesday of each month at 8.30 a.m. at the Greater Reston Chamber of Commerce. The next meeting will be on Tuesday, September 26th. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the Federal Business Council events are the ultimate engagement channel to bring government and industry together. 68% of government personnel report that they attend more than one event each year. FBC has worked with government and industry for 45 plus years to create gatherings where ideas are shared and to help government achieve its goals. This includes agency industry days, cybersecurity symposiums, tech expos, and offsite meetings. FBC provides full life cycle meeting planning and event management. With over 5,000 meetings under their belt, FBC has the experience, systems, and personnel to make your next event exceptional. Learn more at fbcinc.com. Uh, BidSpeed, this is an online platform for searching uh, for uh, procurement opportunities. Uh, find opportunities from every federal, state, local, and public source in the U.S. BidSpeed can help you find teaming partners and company point of contact, expiring contracts, and also provide you with a compliance matrix and proposal templates. BidSpeed is an official partner of the U.S. SBA's 7J Management and Technical Assistance Program. Get started today at BidSpeed.com. Uh, Gubsman and FedMine, as we mentioned, these are our friends who have been providing the data in the webinar series this year and actually in many of the past uh, webinars that we've conducted over the years. The contracting um, Gubsman FedMine is the leading source of data, analytics, and insight for government contractors. They integrate data from 18 federal data sources and sets and create a single database that places key data points at your fingertips. The platform now provides contract opportunities with thousands within thousands of entities at federal, state, local, and education organizations. With the acquisition of FedMine in 2021, the combined GovSpend at FedMine solution empowers teams to make smarter decisions. Again, thank you to GovSpend at FedMine for providing data in the webinar series. Okay, uh, so again, thank you to our sponsors. Um, we certainly appreciate their participation, which makes our series um, complimentary to you. So a little bit about the schedule. Uh, and again, just a quick reminder, everything is being recorded. Uh, PowerPoints are over on the SlideShare site. And we just ask that um, you take a moment when you hop over to YouTube and um, subscribe to our channel, give us a like, make, leave a comment if, um, if you like the recording or not. Um, here's the schedule. It's listed on our website under the the tab called Top 40. Everything in red we've covered. Uh, everything that's in black remains to be covered. Uh, this will continue for the next um, several Wednesdays, finishing out on November 15th. We're assuming that most people are attending uh, these webinars because they're interested in potentially subcontracting with these businesses. So in the event that you are subcontracting, Please be sure that you're cognizant of both the FAR and the DFAR regulations related to subcontracting and the FAR flow down clauses that will impact your business. So you're still going to have rules and regulations that you'll need to abide by. Um, for the FAR, uh, this is going to be across all of government. And then you've got um, the DFARs, which will be uh, applicable to any defense contracts. And then there are certain agencies that, uh, and departments that have their own FAR contracting nuances. We covered all of those. That was last year in 2022. Those are on our website. They're on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, we've also conducted some other contracting webinars, we kicked off this series in the beginning of February, um, covering just the basics of subcontracting, everything from market research through to post-award compliance. You can watch those on the YouTube channel. The link is there on your screen. Uh, last year, we also covered subcontracting opportunities with all, within all of the federal departments. There's 15 webinars um, for each of those departments. And then um, uh, over the years, several years, we've got a variety of webinars, again, all complimentary on the more of the tactical and strategic aspect of subcontracting. 
Just a couple of best practices, and then we'll dig into the, uh, the content for Maximus. The um, focus of subcontracting should be that you are presenting something to a, a larger business or a, uh, another business um, that you are bringing something of value to them. So what is it that you're known for? What do you do and do it really, really well? Um, and be known for that and be very specific and focused. Um, if you're providing landscaping and IT services, those two don't really go hand in hand. I would uh, encourage you to select just one. <clears throat> you also wanna identify um, the opportunities where you are adding value and not leave that up to the company. Uh, they are not there to do your homework for you, so use any of the data aggregators that we mentioned here uh, in our presentation as sponsors or do your own research on all of the um, data, public data um, websites that are out there from SAM.gov to FPBS, USA Spending, and others. Um, and as you are then kind of narrowing down your search to finding the solicitations where you are going to add value, um, that value can also be a relationship that you have within the agency or potentially a lower price, but make sure that you know what it is you're bringing to the table and that you can effectively communicate it, that's reflected on your capability statement and that your uh, potential partner uh, or prime uh, understands that as well. Um, you wanna do as much, as much research as possible, whether, um, and that should include Google Alerts, uh, Google, um, so signing up for news articles, going to the company website, signing up for their newsletter, what associations do they belong to? What trade shows are they going to? Where are they speaking? Get yourself there, get involved so you can start shaking the right hands. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you wanna make sure you customize your capability statement. And so that it speaks to, so that it's very specific that it speaks to the solicitation that you're going after uh, and also ties in your capabilities as well as the potential partner. Um, once you've got all this kind of um, gathered, and this will take some time, um, then I would say it, it makes sense to register on their website as a vendor. You don't want to do that first and then search through um, uh, Google for news to find a lot of negative information about a company or um, that they're in the middle of a uh, merger that, or they're selling off their government division. So take the time to do the research. It will make the rest of what you do after that, it'll make you more effective and more efficient um, and more successful for that reason. Um, do the research, do your research on LinkedIn to find the small business liaison officers, as well as program managers. Your SBLOs uh, operate pretty much like the OSDBUs and OSBPs within the federal government. Uh, they are more or less your uh, advocates for small business to make sure that the uh, business is meeting its uh, small business goals and their subcontracting plan. Okay, uh, enough on that topic. So today we're covering Maximus, uh, some basic info about them. We've got a link to their website. Stock price, they are publicly traded. They're on the New York Stock Exchange, ticker is MMS. Um, the two graphs here, I'm just gonna work left to right. Um, this is kind of from uh, inception, so it goes from 90, 1997 to present day. Um, I just like to look at that to kind of see uh, where, are they, where have they been, where are they going, where, where are they at now, and you don't need to have this memorized, it could just kind of make for good talking points to know that, to show that you're knowledgeable about the company. The next um, graph there is just for the last five years, and the reason we um, display this is to take a, taking a look at what happened in 2020 due to the pandemic, and that's why we also go back several fiscal years for the data as well. Again, that data is provided by our friends at FedMine. Um, so as you can see, we can probably make some um, assumptions there on their stock price in 2020. It looks like it went uh, perhaps down. You'd have to kind of uh, zoom in on that. We pulled this from uh, Yahoo Finance. All business registration, they've got a link here to doing business with us. Uh, again, make sure you do all of your homework before you decide to register on their website. Here's their SAM profile. They're headquartered in uh, Facebook Corner. Uh, for-profit um, company, and here's the link to their um, their LinkedIn company page. Again, this is another spot where you can follow the company, sign up to make sure that you're seeing their news alerts within your uh, LinkedIn feed, and, and you should be looking at this on a pretty regular basis. Um, I don't know about you, but um, I have LinkedIn open pretty much 24-7. 
uh, Bruce Caswell is the um, at the helm here. He's the president and CEO of Maximus. He's been with the company for 18 years, um, but as president and CEO for the last uh, five plus years. Um, he's also participating here at the NBTC. They've got a lot of great events. This would be another opportunity to go and, um, and participate with NBTC for their events if, in fact, Maximus uh, appears to be a good fit for you. Um, so again, do your do your homework here to find out uh, what makes sense. Um, we've got a director of contracts listed here on LinkedIn. Doesn't mean that she is the SBLO or is focused on small businesses. She may actually be uh, more of a contract administrator. So um, I would encourage you to maybe look on their website a little further, do some Google searches, help yourself. The, you've got access to a computer if you're listening to this webinar, so you've got access to Google and sam.gov and LinkedIn and everything else. We're just giving you kind of a high level overview. Okay, now we're gonna look at uh, their contracts on the civilian defense and independent uh, side, and you'll see um, some interesting numbers here. So on the civilian side, uh, their main uh, play is with HHS, um, Department of Treasury, and Department of Education. Uh, as you can see, HHS uh, peaked in 2022, fiscal year 2022, uh, with almost a billion. They're at 749 million. Uh, 2023 looks um, a lot smaller than um, than what they're reporting for 2022. So there could be some potential upside in the next couple of weeks. These numbers were just pulled um, actually earlier this week on Monday. So um, We'll see what happens there. It could be a contract that maybe is um, running out, or I'm not sure. Again, this is where your homework uh, comes into play. Uh, Treasury peaked in 2021. That could have been for some help desk related to stimulus checks or something along those lines. Um, and then Department of the Ed um, looks like they peaked in 2020. And their best year totals were. Um, kind of mirror those numbers. So fiscal year 2022, 20 and 2021 in that order. Um, 2019 looks really small compared to the rest of the numbers and 2023 um, is not half of 2022, but uh, I'm not sure that they will see the same, um, uh, the same level of uh, revenue as they did last fiscal year. But again, there's still a couple weeks left. So uh, we'll see what happens. Um, Q4 is usually where uh, you're going to see the biggest surprises and um, uh, biggest hits. So uh, stay tuned. And again, I would investigate these contracts further. On the defense side, uh, really it's just here at um, OSD, Office of the Secretary of Defense. So um, the, the main uh, headquarters there at Pentagon, um, their, their numbers look um, like they are growing, almost doubled from 2019 to 2020, but then nothing to show for the next three fiscal years. Again, I would keep an eye on that for 2023, particularly because DOD is three months behind in their uh, reporting to FPDS. So um, there could be uh, something decent there, but um, uh, again, I would go back and investigate that further. <clears throat> on the independent, we've got GSA. CFPB and good old Social Security Administration. Um, no surprise here if you understand what Maximus does um, as far as just their business model and their, their services, and we'll get to that in a moment. But on, um, uh, on the independent side, you can see GSA from fiscal year 19 to 20 more or less doubles. Um, and then uh, and then they um, 19 to 20, they double, and then there's um, extreme growth there in 2021. They may have taken over some of the um, help desk uh, support for uh, a lot of the GSA portals that people need to call into for the vendor support center and, and other. Again, I'm not sure. I'm just making an assumption uh, or a semi-educated guess, but then the, the revenue then drops off in 2022. Um, and then it looks like there's uh, an accounting um, edit there in 2023. We'll see what happens with the rest of the year. But um, again, I would investigate the 2021 work because that is um, significantly larger than uh, where they are now, where they were um, last fiscal year, 2022. And it's, um, it's uh, obviously a significant number. 
CFPB um, is pretty steady as well as Social Security with you know uh, some goose eggs and some accounting uh, edits there. Um, overall though, if you look at the totals, um, the 2021 obviously was their best year, but still lower than what we saw for the civilian side. So civilian is really where it's at for Maximus is the, the takeaway. Um, primary uh, services that they're providing are uh, telemarketing, computer system design, um, and some other kind of IT services that are kind of classified as other uh, that popped up to 2020. I'm guessing that was probably related to COVID. Again, probably not certain, so that's um, again up to you to do some more homework. Um, and these numbers just uh, are a mirror of the previous slide with the, the graph. So you can kind of look at some of the trends um, and we went back here to actually 2018, which is nice, I think, to give you a bigger picture um, before COVID, COVID, and kind of post uh, COVID. So when we look at the subcontracting requirements, these are going to be contracts. Subcontracts are going to be contracts that are valued at $750,000 or um, above. So on the civilian side, it's pretty much everything that we saw on the earlier slides with HHS, Treasury, and Ed, uh, more or less leading the way. Um, some other numbers that are popping up here for some other uh, organizations, other, uh, I'm sorry, agencies. And these are not in any particular uh, order. So um, you can certainly do these searches as well if you want on FPTS or uh, USA Spending or SAM.gov to, to get more information and download your own Excel and kind of play with it. On the defense side, um, just like we saw earlier, um, OSD here. Uh, where the numbers are grew significantly from 20 almost doubled from 2019 to 2020 but nothing to show um, and who knows what's happening here in 2023 again that's three months late on the independent side same thing gsa ssa and cfpb um, with um, again similar numbers from earlier so you can you know from those early slides you can more or less predict what you're going to see here on these subcontracting slides uh, the same um, more or less amount of revenue with the same kind of winners and leaders. Again, but we're extracting the contracts that are 750,000 and above. We look at by agency. Um, again, our subcontracting data comes from USA Spending um, and is self-reported, so nothing here to show. Um, this is just going to be a, a repeat and uh, same thing there on, um, on that data. So uh, the same thing here with the subcontracts. Uh, when we look at the GWACs, the government-wide acquisition contracts, we've got the GSA Alliance 2, CIO SP3, um, and, that, and then the small business one as well, and then PSC Large. Um, and we can look at these contract vehicles if you're not familiar. GSA Alliance 2 is the best in class or big contract as they're um, commonly referred to. Um, these are going to be more IT solutions. CIO SP3 is uh, through NIH over at HHS. There's 137 labor categories, so a variety of uh, job titles uh, within that contract vehicle. And then PSC Large, PSC stands for Program Support Centers, you can see there, and that is administered through HHS. Um, so I believe then for large businesses. Um, well, we've got the expiring contracts um, that are 750 and above. Uh, we can look here at the contract number uh, and if you want to do further investigation I would kind of copy and paste that contract number into sam.gov uh, and look at the uh, the details of the work. Um, obviously you've got NAICS code there to kind of guide you to see if it's in sync with what your services or products are. Um, as I say every Wednesday I always find it Interesting to look at the total sales versus the number of transactions um, where you can see if any of these um, contracts were broken into 272 pieces or three or one. It's obviously a big difference when you're splitting um, significant revenue here. So um, keep that in mind as part of your strategy. If it's just um, one transaction, that's that's one contract kind of one and done. If it's broken into 272 uh, task orders, it's a little bit different. On the conclusion side, uh, we're just kind of um, going to talk about um, kind of the genesis of Maximus, uh, what they're doing, and some current events. 
Um, so as far as the work that they do on uh, within kind of HHS, it's Medicaid, Medicare, um, student loans, welfare to work. Um, so you can see why then it, it makes sense that uh, they have the NIH contract, but they're doing work with Social Security Administration. Um, and then they obviously uh, played a big role in the, uh, the pandemic uh, response. They've had some nice awards um, and been honored for that uh, as both um, focused on military and diversity friendly company. Um, back to, or over to the, uh, the genesis of the company, uh, began in 1975 by a Vietnam vet. He also worked for uh, some federal government agencies, including Department of Ed, uh, David Mastron. Uh, they started out as a consulting firm, and then, uh, as you can read here on the slide, they uh, moved into the welfare reform. Um, as we mentioned earlier and showed you on the slides, they are publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange. Um, and then some things started happening in the business. You know, there was um, some activity, we'll say, or some action in 20, 2007 um, after they started expanding their services and they started uh, divesting. And uh, the following year, sold off their security division. And then um, from 20, 2012 to 2015, they went the opposite direction, started acquiring firms um, to grow more of their federal presence through contract vehicles. Uh, there's a company by the name of uh, Navient uh, that they uh, signed an agreement with Maximus through a contract novation. And that agreement then allowed uh, Maximus to uh, be the provider of the loan servicing for Department of Ed. And then uh, just last year, they moved their headquarters to Tyson's Corner. Uh, these are some screenshots from their website. So um, when you go to kind of the About Us, it says that they are providing health and human services worldwide. So um, uh, obviously a good indication of what they do. Uh, and this is from their government page. So three main um, divisions here, technology, kind of their customer service, and then health, and then who they support, uh, DOD, DHS, um, civilian and health. On the DHS side, I don't remember seeing anything uh, significant showing up, but that could be an area of growth for them, uh, that they're either going to grow organically or perhaps through some mergers and acquisitions. Uh, they've got a list of their contract vehicles on their website, but uh, the ones that we showed you, I think we're just the top five. So I'd encourage you to hop over to their website, click on these and expand. If anyone's doing work at the state and local level, they've got some state and local contracts as well. I encourage you to take a look at those. Um, a little bit of some, uh, some negative news. And again, this is always important because you want to make sure that you know as much as you can about the business. Um, and these are all fairly recent. Uh, four weeks ago, there was a, a big data breach at Maximus that's obviously going to negatively impact them. Um, they've, uh, they've got some um, unfortunate press about labor practices. Um, but then here, um, well, at the top here, then you've also got some other uh, negative uh, news here on uh, insider trading. Um, but then uh, one of the um, uh, financial gurus is encouraging uh, Maximus as a buy. Um, so they're giving them a, a buy rating for their stock. So a little bit of positive. Um, uh, so, you know, uh, the rest is um, not favorable for them, but um, data breaches happen and companies typically recover. It's just the world that we live in. Um, but again, take all of this into account and just make sure you're abreast of what's happening at the company. Um, oops, I think kind of, okay. And that is it for Maximus. So thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, we hope to see you next week. And today's recording will be on our website uh, later this afternoon, uh, if not by tomorrow morning. The best way to be alerted of that is to go over to our YouTube site. You can find it on our website. We've got a quick link to YouTube and just um, follow our YouTube channel. You'll get an alert soon as this uh, webinar is uploaded. Thanks again. Have a good rest of your Wednesday and hope to see you next week.